What's up, Zach here, and today I've got the Yonex Fusion Rev 5, and I have been looking forward to putting this shoe on my foot ever since I initially put the Fusion Rev 4 on my foot because I liked so much about the shoe and so much of it was so elite, except for the ankle collar, in my opinion, I just didn't think had uh, the lockdown that some other shoes would, and I didn't think that the the uppers of it really matched up with the performance of the rest of the shoe and so i was really keen to see kind of what the fives did and uh interesting shoes and a lot of interesting stuff under the hood as well so let's get into them and huge thanks to tennis warehouse for sending me a pair of the fives to check out if you want to buy a pair for yourself i will have links in the description below let's get started with the uppers which as you can tell are completely encased in tpu which i absolutely love especially how the modern game is being played right now, now the thing i like about that is that the the lace line is also reinforced that TPU. It also goes pretty high up there. That ankle collar is steeped up pretty high, which does give a very good lockdown into the shoe. Now, unlike the fours, the fives are a three piece tongue, which thank you. Um, it is a very thick tongue at that too. You have these two little increases in surface area as well. So the laces go a little bit more horizontal instead of vertical, which does give a nice feeling of lockdown in the toe box as well, pivoting with tennis. That does do very nice. Now, the thing that I found pretty interesting was, is that, yeah, this is all TPU, but there are lines of TPU that go all the way around. It's not just one giant slab. So the shoe does move a little bit better than you think it would with all this TPU. It does kind of flow with the foot a little bit more, especially going side to side. Going front to back, there is definitely some break in, you know, going north to south, but side to side movement out of the box. I was really shocked at how little break in it took. Now, the only thing you gotta look out for is, on the breathability test, if you look at where the fog was coming out, it was really only coming out around the tongue. There really was no egress anywhere else. That did translate on court. I play tested these on a day, I think it was 38 degrees Fahrenheit. I was on Thanksgiving day during the Turkey Bowl with me and my dad, and my feet were very warm <laughs> the whole day, even though the rest of me was pretty cold. So they definitely do trap a little bit of heat. If you look at these though, on the breathability test kind of tells the same story. They heated up 129.6 degrees, then cooled down another 73.8 degrees. And yeah, I mean, it's better than I thought it would do uh, for sure, because I think the heat was kind of finding its way through some of these crevices, whereas the fog couldn't. But um, this is definitely a shoe that you're going to want to wear, maybe bring a second pair of socks with if you're playing on super hot days. But like I said, with all that, all that TPU going all the way around, integrating into the heel counter as well, the stability you get from there and the containment, I, I really think uh, it does an outstanding job for the profile of the shoe. And speaking of that profile, if you look at the upper durability test, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, I'm sure y'all guessed it, really doesn't make much of a scuff on this. It, it does on the very bottom layer of that, uh, which was interesting, but on the actual drag guard here on the toe, really not much at all. So dragging and sliding, uh, beating these up just in general, I think you're gonna be just fine. Getting into the midsole, if you didn't know, I always do the bounce height test prior to opening up the shoe. So even though if I can look up the shoe and kind of see what's under there, I don't know exactly where it's placed along the shoe or how much of what foam or what component or shank is in there. So I do like to get those results and then open it up and see what I saw. I do think it kind of removes some of the bias in the review. Interesting thing is, is this has power cushion in the heel as well as in the forefoot. Now the rest of the shoe, kind of like other Yonex shoes, really thin, I think it's over here, really thin carbon fiber. I could hear it with my knife. It, it almost felt like it was going over almost like a, a really like knitted piece of cardboard or something. I, that, that's the only re way I can describe the noise. But then it's got also this plastic shank underneath of it. And that's like the Fusion Rev 4, that's what's doing, I think, most of the work. You're a heavier player, I don't really think is gonna notice much of that carbon fiber. You're gonna notice more of the plastic underneath of it. Now, do you even know the power cushion is thicker in the heel versus the forefoot? On the bounce height test, still got 31 centimeters in the heel and then 30.5 in the forefoot. So really not much difference. And that was interesting because I didn't look up the specs of this shoe prior to getting them. And I wondered maybe if they had power cushion in the forefoot because they were so similar. And you know, that bounce height test does kind of confirm to me a lot of things I feel with these on court. These aren't springboards, right? This power cushion, even though they say it's energy returning, I find to be more of a 
comfort aspect, right? I find it to be more shock absorbing. Um, and the fact they put it here in the forefoot where it gets pretty thin, I do think it's gonna protect the forefoot pretty well in terms like shock inducing injuries, things like that. But in terms of a snapback feeling or in terms of a diving board, you know, or a bounce house, like some shoes I review, I, I don't feel that much more of a forgiving and cushioned feel, power cushion, I guess. Um, so like I said, it's still a nice profile for what they are, but just don't expect these to be like Zoom Air where you can actually feel a little bit of a pop underfoot. To me, this is definitely meant for more cushion, you know, comfort and shock absorption. And getting into the outsole tread of the Fusion Rev 5, shocker, it's awesome. It's also very similar to the Fusion Rev 4. On the medial side, you get very flat herringbone with very, very, very narrow channels. So it's almost like a flat tread pattern, but uh, it will grip if you put force down through it. You also have a nice little bending channel here that also really aids in some excellent grip. On the lateral side though, this is just what I absolutely love. This really chunky arrow pattern. You know, when you are going side to side and you're pushing off from the side, this stuff just digs in so well. The court I was playing on the one day had some real slick spots. It rained yeah. a few days later, it's cold, it's not evaporating. So the court was a little bit slick and this thing was still digging in like crazy. Um, just the feeling underfoot of the Fusion Rev 5s uh, with their rubber. Um, I know I said this in the Fusion Rev 4 video, how I think it's the best rubber in tennis. I still think that. I still think this is like the best compound, the, just the, the best mixture of treads. I just don't think you get much better than this rubber. Um, you look at the durometer, it's 19.5. It's not as high as some others, but it's still very good for a sliding profile or a very gripping profile. Anybody that produces a lot of heat under their foot. And if you look at the outsole durability test on it, uh, 10 seconds highest grit sandpaper, not even a millimeter of damage on there. I think it's more of the compound of rubber versus the hardness uh, that produces the good durability for this. So that, that, that's kind of interesting. And I believe that was the Fusion Rev 4 was kind of the same deal. Now, if you look at the speed ratio of these, they do come in only at a 2.02, .02, which I actually think is kind of representative of the shoe, to be honest. They're very quick in a contained area, and they're really good for all court speed, right? You can get these out of your way really quick, and you can establish traction so quickly on these. So if you're like trying to get out of the way for an inside out forehand or something like that, and you really kind of really should have hit a backhand, you can really set yourself up very easily at net. They're so easy to get down on the ground with. They just, like I said, they establish traction very quick so you can make moves very quick, which I like. It's just that going front to back, yeah, they're not rocket ships for sure. Um, but I think if you bring a lot of the speed to the table and if you want that containment, you just wanna be able to throw your body around the court. I still think these are a very good mover shoe. You just have to want the tools they provide. But getting into my least favorite part of the Fusion Rev 5, and that is the fit. You can just see from above, they are pretty narrow. And if you look at the bottom, they have pretty narrow profile. They do in flare as well. And because it is all TPU, and because the lace line is offset, um, they lock down around that midfoot pretty well. If you're a narrow footed person, this is like your dream shoe, I think, to be honest. Medium foot, I think breaks this in okay, a 2E, you go up a half size, then you can break this in, especially if you have a lower profile, but stiffer orthotic that can kind of push the shoe out, then you'd be okay. If you're somebody with a 4E foot, I think maybe just look elsewhere. Now, if you have ball of foot pain or heel pain, this is one of the better shoes on the market, I think, right now, if you still want that kind of low to the ground feeling, because these do produce an incredible low to the ground feeling in them. So if you want that profile, but with a little bit more protection, I think these are good. A low profile orthotic in these, I think does really well. A super bulky one, you might get a little bit of heel slippage on there. Um, in terms of like tendonitis, arch pain, arch strain, like I said, with even a low profile orthotic, I think they do okay. And I just think for containment on a shoe, kind of this streamlined, um, I think it's just a really nice profile. And like I said, if you want that tacky sensation on the ground and a little bit of forgiveness, I think that power cushion was placed just in the right area for just enough of it to make it okay for those people. And getting into the play test, I kind of alluded yeah. to it throughout the video. But these things are just a, a masterpiece in ground feel, tactile sensation, and containment. I just, I, I'd love to know what Yonex is doing in their rubber compound department. Uh, but like I said, I think, I think I said this a year and a half ago, but I, the person needs a raise, whoever's coming up with this outsole trend. You just get so much 
feel from these, right? You just, it, it's almost like having that tennis racket, right? That you've just broken in just enough and you can just get all that feel with it, right? You just kind of just know how the ball is gonna come off of it. You get that crisp feeling off your racket. That's kind of what these feel like on foot. You just have to be the right foot type for them, right? Because if you're a wider foot, you're just gonna be cramping them. You're not gonna be able to enjoy kind of the tools these have. They need broken in going north to south. So if you're gonna buy these for doubles, right, and you're charging the net all the time, they're gonna need a significant amount of break in before you can get that nice feeling at net, kind of getting low for balls, those quick, you know, movements, and also get the fluid movement to the net. So just watch out for that. A baseline grinder, someone who's a retriever, all court player, like I said, you bring the speed, you bring the leg strength, these are gonna give so many tools in return. I almost like these better than the Eclipsian. The Eclipsian as well is a very tactile shoe, ton of feel, just a ton of court presence with that shoe. This one's just a little more protective, right? It's still super narrow. The only thing is, is in the forefoot of these, I think it's just a little bit more forgiving versus the Eclipsian where it almost like feel the ground. So I, I think they're they're just two sides of the same coin basically. But I think there's gonna be a lot of people that like this shoe. Um, it's not the lightest thing out there. So you definitely gonna have to get used to a little bit more of that weight. The good part about the weight of it though, is that it's, it's mainly in the uppers because of all the TPU. So that it's sharing the load throughout your foot. So you don't really feel the weight on foot as much when you're playing in them, but just don't expect these to be the solution speeds, right? And, and definitely the Eclipsians. They just feel a little bit lighter and airy underfoot. I think that's kind of where they have the Fusion Revs, but the Fusion Revs have more of the rugged containment too, more of the dragging protection. So um, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below, uh, especially because I really liked the updates to this shoe. I really think they did a good job. They just come out with a 2E version of it. That would be really nice. I think they would really corner the market for a lot of different players. So if Yonex is listening, um, that would be something very nice for all of us wide-footed players. And if you wanna see another just really interesting shoe go under the knife, the Fila Mondo Forza, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. Respect your rubber and foam. I'll see you someone in the